Hi. Um, today I'll be showing you um, a, a starting a series of videos around Catling tool. Catling is a performance testing or, or load generation um, measurement tool that you can use to test how well your application or website or um, services uh, perform. Yeah, if you use something like a JMeter or perhaps Load Runner or um, some of the other performance testing tools, it has a very similar concept. Um, if you are brand new to performance testing or not not done it much, um, there's a good documentation on the website around kind of basics how to how to create a scenarios, etc., etc. Uh, uh, it's the actual tool itself you can get from Catling.io. Uh, there's a download link uh, directly at the at the menu bar here. Um, I think it's version 2.17. That's that's this this well this tutorial uh, was recorded. That was available. So basically, uh, let's just download it. And while while that happens, uh, I can go on through the, the, some of the other uh, documentation aspects and other aspects of the website. So first of all, let's let's um, download the the zip file. There's also a, another ways of um, using that gut link. You can use it as a Maven dependency or use it as a Scala uh, build um, a package if you want to incorporate in it in your, your project. But uh, I propose that we will now for this uh, test, we'll, we'll, for this video, sorry, this tutorial, we'll, we'll use the shell script or the batch file to run our tests. Uh, the documentation itself is good. Uh, if you go to the reference documentation, um, and there is a kind of quick start guide that explain um, the basics of the Gatling tool. Uh, firstly, Gatling uses um, a Scala-based domain-specific language or DSL language. Um, it's you know you don't have to have experience with Scala. It is it is a simple simple enough to understand as a scripting language. And there's an example on the documentation page that looks like familiar, particularly if you've done some Java development. It looks essentially it's just a normal class uh, that extends the Gatling simulation. So this is your scenario or this is your class of simulation that has the scenario details. Um, so it would explain, for example, your base URL. So what is, if, if you're using a relative parts, um, what sort of headers you're expecting the request to have? So this is for HTTP. Uh, what user agent you are simulating? What um, URLs you're requesting? Things, times, etc. And what is the concurrency of your users? If you can see the the, um, the lines have been commented with line number and there are and below that explaining explanation what each of the line does. So it's very useful. Um, explanation of how the, the Gatling domain specific language works. Um, essentially that that um, Scala simulation class needs to live underneath the Gatling libraries and when you run the Gatling shell script that, that gets compiled and, and essentially displayed as a menu option when you want to run your test. So Running the Gatling itself again, there's ex instructions how to run it on a shell uh, script in a, in a Linux, Unix, or Macintosh, or Mac, or in the Windows world, Gatling or batch file. So let's see the download file. <coughs> so essentially, if we open the terminal. So I'm going to just leave it um, in the, the downloads directory for now. Doesn't, you can obviously move it somewhere more appropriate, but um, I'll just use this, this location to, 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 for this demonstration. So essentially the directory structure underneath the, underneath the Gatling looks like this. So you have your, your binary, your configuration, 
um, your libraries, your results and your user files. So if I go to uh, the binary for example, here you have your, your Catlink shell script and batch file and recorder uh, batch file and shell script. Essentially, if you want to execute your scripts, this is what you need to run. So if we just do Catlink, uh, it will that's included there as an example tests already. So it will compile those now, now and, and make them available for you to run. We won't actually run them because I'm not quite aware, I'm quite sure what the actual uh, uh, URL that we'll try to run against, so it probably will not work. Right, okay, so that's done, that's done that now. And essentially, if you want to run the very first one, you select zero, and then you get simulation ID and description of the run itself. Uh, we won't run it now, so let's just escape that. Uh, another binary file there is the actual recorder. So in order to create your script, there's essentially three ways to do this. Uh, there is a HTTP proxy which sits between your website and your browser and it will record just all your clicks uh, and URL requests that you do and they will create the, the Scala file for you. Um, they're, that's very, they're very handy and you, or you can also have, you have a whitelist and blacklist for certain, um, certain elements you want to exclude from your task. For example, st typically maybe some static content. Um, there are a couple of issues with this recorder. The recorder um, does tend to make it a little bit difficult to read scripts. Um, and also the whitelisting and blacklisting actually stops the browser seeing the, the, the resources. It's not just that it's been removed from the, the output script, but it actually might stop your page from rendering. So let's say if you remove, if you blacklist the JavaScripts because you don't want to download the JavaScripts by your test, um, you will um, probably not be able to see the site because it might nowadays depend on JavaScript. Um, so that's one way of doing it. The, the recorder itself it has two options. You can either use it as a proxy or you can use a HAR file, or HAR file, which is essentially HTTP or HTML archive, HTTP archive. That that essentially you can use, for example, Chrome to create and um, export from Chrome and then import in here. They will turn your exported HR, um, HTTP archive into a uh, Gatling script. And the third way, obviously, is by manually typing up the scenario. But if you just go back really quickly into the binary directory here, so the recorder itself. We'll open another Java, Java file, Java uh, GUI. Essentially, the recorder looks like this, and the other option is for the the half file conversion. And I personally prefer to use this one because you have more control. Um, now, in the next video, I'll show a little bit more how to actually record a script and, and how to clean it up.